Tootsie Tuts, and I'm here today with some brand new box cards. And we just came out with a kit of box cards a couple weeks ago, and you guys have been having so much fun with them, sharing pictures on our Facebook wall, and we're totally loving them. It looks like you are too. So I really wanted to come up with some summer box cards, and definitely stay tuned later this year for fall, Halloween, and Christmas box cards too, because it's just so much fun. They're so dimensional, but it's so cool how they fold flat to fit inside their envelope also. So if you're not familiar with box cards, that's how it works. It just sits up like a cute little box. It's got all these little cute layers, and then it also folds flat and goes inside of its envelope. So this one is nice and fun for a birthday or any kind of celebration, you know, anniversary, maybe even wedding, maybe without the stars. Well, no, stars could be wedding too. So that one should be nice and versatile, I'm hoping. And I've got that one actually right here too, and you can see how simple it is. It's really just this one main piece, and then there are these little inserts which just go right inside the main piece. So as soon as I made my first box card, I didn't invent it, people have been making them for a while, and um, whoever came up with the first box card, awesome, awesome, love it. But as soon as I made my first one, I was like, I can't believe how cool it looks, but how easy it is to put together. So also in your PDF, in your download, for each card, it shows you exactly how to glue together your little um, inserts that go inside. So I tried to make it as easy as possible, and we'll get to that here in just a minute. I'll show you how each one goes together. So we've also got four more. We've got our cute little piano, which is nice and simple. It's actually only got one insert inside of it, but I think that's all it needs because it's got plenty of detail. So gift for, you know, piano player, piano teacher, music lover, jazz lover, what have you. Hopefully that comes in handy. So we've also got our cute little picnic basket and obviously super cute and fun. Would make a nice birthday, thank you, anniversary. You could even do it up for Valentine's and make it like a cute, like romantic picnic basket type of thing. I think that would be super cute. So we also have our little carnival street fair one, which of course would be an adorable birthday card for a child or someone who's young at heart or whatever. I think this one might be my favorite. It's just really fun. And you also get each little element you also get separately. So let's say you want to make a card and you just want to use the, the Ferris wheel on the front of a card. You can totally go into your extras folder and just pull out the Ferris wheel by itself. So finally we have our cute little patriotic festive summer house. And you could also make it, you know, <clears throat> not patriotic if you wanted to just make a cute little house as, you know, birthday, thank you, housewarming, whatever, congratulations or something. So super fun, and you also get each box card plain without all the different embellishments. So let's say you just want to make you just want to make a basket box card, and you want to put whatever you want inside of it. You can do that easily with each card. So the paper that I used is super fun, and it's nice and summery. As soon as I saw these cute canning jars, I was like, "Gotta get that paper." I'm still still got to learn how to can, but at least I, I got my cute paper that has the canning jars on it. So it's nice and fun for summer, strawberries and cows and flowers and super cute. It's by Studio Calico and it's called South of Market. <clears throat> and it also comes with some special vellum and acetate, which I didn't get a chance to use this time, but that would be fun for, I'm not even sure what, something. You guys are creative, I'm sure you could think of something. And there's also a small pad too. So, love the paper, but like I always say, whatever kind of paper you want to use for your project is going to look awesome. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how these go together, so let's get started. So we can start off with our festive house box card, and I've got my pieces laid out here, and I went ahead and I glued together the little embellishments on each insert. So like I was saying, your PDF shows for each card, it shows the embellishment layout for the insert. So you can see the first one is just a little fence, and then the next one is the little arbor with the flowers, and then the house, and then the back panel decorations, which are just these two. So I also went ahead and I glued my stars and my stripes on these flaps, which fold over like this. And then on the exterior of my box card, I went ahead and glued all these panels on, and then this white piece, there's a white piece on the back of each card that is optional. If you want to glue that on to write, you know, 
happy housewarming from me, blah, blah, blah. You can do that or you can stamp on it. Or if you want to leave it off, that's fine too. It's up to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some glue on this one side tab here and get the main part of my box card glued together. So there's glue on my tab and I'm just carefully lining it up. Super easy. And before the glue is completely dry, I think it's a good idea to flatten it out gently. Make sure that it's going to lay flat and go both ways. And then we can set it down. So now let's take our inside front insert and we just want to have a nice even layer of glue on this this whole entire tab on the bottom and then just stick that right inside the front of the box card so as you can see I don't know how well you can see inside there but it's just glued right to the front nice and easy so the next insert looks like this and you can see the back is finished off nicely, so it's nice and sturdy. And then we want these tabs to be folded toward us. And those tabs are sized just right so that when you place it inside your box card, you can kind of use those tabs to place it. So we want the, the top of the tab, or the we want it, basically we want it flush with the top of the box. So this line here is flush with this line here. And before it's completely dry, we can fold it both ways gently to make sure it will lay flat. And then also, those tabs that I put inside are, are butted up against the front of this wall. So it's probably pretty difficult to see inside there, but you can just use that front of the box to butt your tabs right up against it. So to demonstrate what I'm showing, what I'm saying, this next one, the tabs get folded away from you and it goes in the same exact way. So you can see that this, the back side of the tab here is flush with the back of the box and then this top part is flush with the top of the box. So let's get some glue on these tabs and pop them right in. Now, if yours is not perfectly flush or whatever, it is not the end of the world. I just, I sized it so that it would kind of be a guide for where to put it. But as long as it looks nice and as long as you can fold it flat, then you're good to go. So next I can put in my back panel and this, this would have been nice to do right after I glued that first tab, but that's okay. Sorry about that, guys. So I'm just gluing this back panel right onto the back, right onto the back of my box card. And then I would probably grab like a pop dot or something dimensional to put this tree back here, kind of sticking off to the side. So next for our party box card, I've also got my pieces laid out here and glued together as far as the inserts go. And once again, in your PDF, you can see exactly where your little embellishments go on each insert. If you're making it, you know, exactly like I've made it, then you can check that out to see where everything goes, like the little stars and the envelope and the cake and the presents. So those inserts are ready to go. And then I've also gone ahead and glued my panels onto my box card and again on the back this white piece is optional for writing or stamping if you want and then I went ahead and I glued my balloons well actually I used pop dots behind this piece to put my balloons in place and then to do these balloons all I did was I took regular scotch tape it's not necessarily like archival or acid free but I just taped a piece of twine behind each balloon and then I gathered them down here tied it in a knot and then I used a little glue dot to secure that. So you can go ahead and glue your panels and your balloons and everything on. If you want to wait till the end to glue your little stamped piece on, that's fine, or whatever you would like to do. So the next thing I want to do is put some glue on this side tab here and close up our box. 
And again, before the glue dries completely, let's just do a double check. Gently fold it both ways, make sure it's gonna be flat, and it is. And then we can grab our inside front insert and put some glue on that bottom tab portion of it. And then just glue that right inside the front of our box card. So it looks really cute, like everything's popping out. And then for our next insert, we can fold those tabs towards you, put some glue on them, and then we want it flush with the top, and the front of those tabs can go ahead and be butted up against the front of your box card, and do a little gentle double check before the glue is completely dry, and then the same thing again, except the tabs are folded away from you for this second insert here. Flush with the top and the back side of that tab gets butted up against the back of your box. So that is how all of our box cards in this kit work. Nice and easy. Oops, mine came undone, but you get the idea. If you want to go ahead and tie a cute little tie a cute little bow with some ribbon and use a glue dot on top of those presents that looks super cute, as well as some cute little bling. Next for our piano box card, it is nice and simple. As far as inserts go, there's only two, as you can see. And once again, in your PDF for this card, it shows you exactly where those embellishments are glued, if you want to do it like that. And then for the body of my card, I went ahead and glued my embellishments on, on the flaps and the piano keys. If you want, you can put the, the panels and everything on at the end. You don't really have to put them on now. I just think it's easy to see where they go. I can show you guys where they go and all that. So this box card is actually two pieces. The black paper is glued together here with one tab. So you've got one piece here, one piece here. All you want to do is glue them together with the, the tab along the side so that it looks like this. And then you do want to go ahead and put this front panel on so that we can go ahead and fold these legs in the bench up. And I don't have any glue dots handy, but a glue dot as opposed to glue would be kind of nice for this because we just want to glue one little dot right here up at the top so that it kind of forms a little bit of a curve. And if you want, if you're concerned about it not being flat enough when you put it in your envelope, even though the envelope is oversized so that it can accommodate a lot of embellishments and some extra, extra stuff, if you're concerned about it not being flat enough on those curved legs, you can take some scissors and just cut off a tiny bit up at the top there, and then it will fit it will lay down completely flat. So I'm just gluing up the bench in the little place where the petals would be. And if you want to do some cute little, I put three little enamel dots down there to kind of represent the foot petals. So now all that's left to do is close up our box and pop our inserts into place. So I've got some glue on that side tab there and I will close it up. And we can make sure it's gonna fold flat. And then let's take our first insert here and put some glue on that bottom tab portion of the insert and just pop that right inside the front of our box. And if you want to kind of bend this back gently, that looks kind of cute. And then we can fold these tabs away from, away from you, put some glue on them, or the tab could be folded towards you. It doesn't really matter since there's only one insert like this going in. And the back of the tabs are flush with the back of the box and it's nice and level. 
Actually, it's kind of crooked, but you get the idea. So, again, before the glue dries, I want to make sure it's going to fold flat, and it does. So there's our cute piano box. Now for our picnic basket box card. I've got my little embellishments glued on to my inserts again. And once again in your PDF, you can see that if you want to double check and see where your little things go, you can, even though it's pretty obvious where they go. So I've got those glued together and I've got my grapes ready to go. And then all that's left is my cute little basket with some panels on these four flaps, as well as these panels which are, they're separate so that they will fit inside of an embossing folder because I thought it would look really cute if it was embossed. So the next thing we want to do is put some glue on this side tab here and close up our box. And once again, this white piece here is optional. If you want to use that to write something on, you can, but you don't have to. You don't have to do anything, of course. And the next thing we can do is grab our first inside front insert here with glue on the bottom portion of it and glue that right inside the front of the box. And the next insert has the tabs folded towards me here with some nice glue on them. And then the front of those tabs is flush with the front of the box. So placing it is nice and straightforward. And again, before the glue dries, let's make sure it will fold flat. And mine, mine's a little bit crooked, but you guys get the idea. So if it is crooked, you mean just before the glue dries, just kind of readjust it until you've got it just right which is not hard to do. It's just, it's a little, uh, yeah, if you gotta readjust it, no big deal. So the next insert goes in the same way. The back of the tabs are flush with the back of the box. And before it's dry, double check. <coughs> and then for our final tab with the two plates, or our final insert, I mean, the two plates, we can put some glue on the back side of this tab portion and glue that right inside the back of our box. Super cute, and if you want to add, at this point you can add your grapes and cover them with bling if you want. You can put a cute little bow. I added a bunch of red buttons with glue dots because I thought it just looked cute. Finally, for our summer fair box card, I've got my pieces again laid out here and my little embellishments are glued onto my inserts. And once again, in your PDF for this card, you can see exactly where the little embellishments go if, you, if I would find that helpful, you know. So there's three inserts and then the main body of the box card. And this is the outside of it. And we've got this space here. If you wanna write something there, you can use the white or leave it off if you want. And there are three panels here, which are kind of hard to see because on this one, they are red. On my original one, I embossed them, which I thought was cute. And then, of course, on the inside, since it's going to close up like this, this is the inside. And we've got our cute little, like, display with the rubber ducky and everything. So the next thing you want to do is close it up with some glue on that side tab and glue the box closed. And before the glue dries, make sure it'll fold flat. And then we can grab our inside front insert here, put some glue on that tab portion on the bottom and glue that right inside the front of the box. Super festive and cute, I love all the dimension. There's just something about dimension that seems like you can never go wrong with plenty of dimension in paper projects. It's just kind of unexpected and fun and makes people say, wow, how did you do that? Even though it's very easy. So I've got these tabs folded towards me with glue on them. And the front, the front of the tabs are flush with the front of the box. 
so that the inserts are spaced out nicely. And then before the glue is completely dry, let's make sure it will fold flat. And it will. Mine is slightly crooked right now, but as long as you get the idea, yours will be more perfect. And if it's not, you can readjust it. So there is my glue on the tabs on this one. And the back of the tabs are flush with the back of the box. And there's our cute card. I'll just make sure it's going to fold and it will. So we're all set and then it looks super cute if you add some little embellishments and I put a line of bling under the tent. I think that looks really cute too. So there you have it, super fun box cards. Again, can't wait to see what you make. You'll have to share a picture on our Facebook wall or on your blog or pin it on Pinterest or put it on Instagram and do hashtag SVG cuts so we can see it. So thanks for watching. I will catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.